Welcome back to Python. Today we're going to be talking about network security. All right, so in our last lesson, we talked about network security and web security applications. And if you remember, we talked about the different possible components in a network. And then we also talked about single computer networks and tiered networks. So today we're actually going to be practicing implementation of a tiered network and how we can secure a tiered network using SSL or TSL components. Now, before we start, we've got to do some basic setup for this project. So I need you to set up some virtual machines. You can use any cloud hosting provider that you'd like uh, to manage and create these machines. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I recommend either Linode or Ionos. For Linode, I have a link here for $100 of free credit. This is not my link. This is another YouTuber's affiliate link. And then for Ionos, they offer a free month of cloud servers. So you can always go sign up there. Now, once you've made an account, you're going to have a system that looks something like this. This is my account in Ionos. And simply all you have to do is click on create and then click either cloud server or dedicated server. The cloud servers are cheaper. So you'll click on the cloud server. Once you're inside of the cloud server setup, you just choose your basic settings here. In our case, since we're doing something small, I'm going to use the extra small setting. You can also add some block storage, and then the last thing you do is select your image. In my case, I typically use Ubuntu or Debian. I'm currently a Linux user, so I'm more comfortable in those environments. And then once you've selected your image, you simply hit create, and then it'll charge your account or take away some of those credits that you've stored up. Now, once you hit create, it does take a minute to get that server established. You got to remember it's building a virtual machine from scratch or based off of the image that you selected. And in my experience, that can take anywhere from five minutes to 15 minutes. Now, once you have one of your servers established, you want to add a second server. We're going to be using two servers today. And there are a couple of key pieces of information that you're going to need out of your server settings. First off, we need to know the IP address. And then secondly, you need to make sure that you have access to this server. And to access this server, you of course need your IP address, but you also need the username as well as the password for your server. So while you're getting those servers set up, feel free to pause right here and come back whenever you're ready to go. Now for today, we're going to be building a tiered network. So we're going to have our client machine, which is basically your laptop or your workstation, whatever you're working off of. And then we're going to be connecting that client to one server and then a second server. So we're going to be transmitting data through server one into server two. So to get started with this build, the first thing we need to do is take this client machine or our, our computer, our laptop and connect it to one of our servers. So we're going to connect from client to server one. And in order to do that, we need to make an import. So we need to import our socket layer and then we're going to define a function. So the first thing to do is to connect to that server and to connect to the server, we need two pieces of information. We need to know the host name, which is just the IP address, and then also the port that we are going to be connecting to. Now, once we have those two pieces of information, the connect to server function is going to create a new variable that's called S. S will equal our socket. A socket is basically an access point to a machine and sockets are very commonly used in networking. So we're gonna call in the socket package and we're gonna create a socket and that socket will consist of socket.af underscore inet. AF underscore inet is a set of networking protocols defined by IP version four uh, networking protocols. So we're just defining the basic protocols that are going to be used for this socket. And then after the inet, we're also going to pass another variable, which will be socket dot sock stream. And sock stream basically says that this specific socket will be using what's called a TCP protocol. And TCP stands for transmission control protocol. So all we've done with the s variable here or with the s object is create our initial variable so we've initialized the s object the next thing we're going to do and connect to server is take that s object and say dot connect and then we specify the host and the port and then we ask it to return s to us and that's as simple as it is so this one function right here creates a new socket object and connects to the server based on our specified host and port, which are found here on your virtual machine data. Now, after we've defined our function to connect to the server, we can actually practice connecting to the server. In order to do that, we have to specify our host as well as our port based on the data from our server. And then what we're gonna do is just call on that function. So we're gonna call on connect to server, and then we're gonna specify the host and the port, which we defined up above, and we'll save that as the object S. 
Now, once we've defined S, what we can do is send some data to S. So what we're going to say is that we're creating a new object that's called data and data will be equal to S dot receive and then a number. So we're just practicing sending data here and S dot receive in this case is 1024. And then after we've sent that data, we're going to say print received and then we're going to ask it to print out that piece of data once it has been received by that server. And then at the end here, we can just call on close connection. So S dot close and we've officially closed the connection between our client and server one. So that is a basic connection to server one, but that does not have all of the security protocols that we might be interested in. Uh, so in this case, server one technically is exposed. The data that we're transmitting across our network is not secured besides the fact that it's your private server that you're sending data to. So in order for someone to try to gain access to it, they have to know that server exists. But we can create an extra layer of protection here by adding SSL and TLS encryption. And SSL is a secure socket layer and TLS stands for transport layer security. They're essentially the same thing. TLS is the updated version of SSL, but we can still use the SSL library to create a TLS encryption. So now that we have that basic connection to our first virtual machine from our client machine, we're going to add this encryption layer using the SSL module in Python. So we've already imported socket up above. Now we're going to import SSL and all we have to do to add this SSL wrapper around our connection is call on SSL context. So we're going to make a new object that's called SSL context, which will be equal to SSL dot create default context. This is a function that it sets up the initial basic state of every SSL connection. You can add more complexity to this if you'd like, but this typically handles uh, most situations or most types of connections that you need. Now, once we've created the SSL context object, we can take that SSL context object and wrap our socket in it. So we're going to take the socket that we created up above. So we're going to take that connect to server we made up above with our host and our port information, and we're going to wrap that socket with our specific SSL context, and then we're gonna save that SS again. So this creates a new SSL context with the default settings already in there. So we can just add that on to our connect to server function that we defined up above. Now we can take and test our new connection. Now we can test that new SSL connection. So we created this S object up above that is now wrapped in our SSL wrapper. And what we're gonna do is just practice sending some data to it. So we can say that S dot receive, again, we're gonna send the number 1024 across our server and that'll be equal to our data. And then we're simply gonna ask for Python to print out the received notification here and our data if it has been received and then we'll ask to close it. So it's as simple as that to take your exposed connection and wrap that socket in an SSL context to provide some encryption and some higher level security. So why wouldn't you take the time to write these extra two lines of code? It just makes sense. Protect your data and be sure that you're being safe online. Now what we've done up to this point is connected our client to server one. And we've also encrypted this connection or our sockets from the client to server one using an SSL or TLS encryption. But what we haven't done is added in server two. So the next thing we're gonna do is connect server one to server two. And to do this, we have to take the basic code that we wrote to connect client to server one, and we have to update it as well as update the code on server one to handle and listen for information from our client. So let's go back down here to establish the connection between the client, our virtual machine one and virtual machine two. Again, we're gonna import our socket and our SSL modules, and then we're gonna head over to our client. So on your machine, you need to execute the following code. Simply what we're gonna do here is redefine that connect to server function that we defined above. In this case, again, we're gonna create a socket. That socket will be equal to the object S, and that socket's gonna define two sets of protocols, the AF underscore INET, to tell it we're using IP version four, and then also sock stream to tell it that it's using a TCP protocol. After we've defined S, we're gonna define our SSL context as well as our SSL connection. And you'll notice that the SSL connection object here is just our socket wrapper based off of our host name and our port. After we've built the SSL connection here, we're gonna take the SSL connection and we are gonna connect to our host and our port that's defined by the connect server function. And we're simply gonna ask for it to return the SSL connection. 
So this is connecting to our servers from our client machine. Now on the client machine, because in this case, we're going to be dealing with two different, uh, two different machines or two different servers. We want to define the host and the port for both server one and server two. So we're going to add lines in here for host one and port one, as well as add lines in here for host two and port two. In between there, we're also going to connect to the server using our function. So we're going to say that server one is just called S and S will be equal to connect to server of host one and port one. And then we're going to define a second server that will be server two and server two will be equal to connect to server of host two and port two. So now we've established the initial connections to both server one and server two. And then we're going to test the connections to our server one and server two. And so you can test your connection just by sending a simple message. So in our case, we're going to say s dot send all. And we're going to say hello server one. And then again, we have to define our data. Again, the S here is telling it that server one can receive up to 1024 as its maximum uh, data volume. And then we're gonna ask to print what was received from server one. And then we repeat the same exact process for server two. So in this first part, we've set up the client machine, sent out some sample data that just says hello server one and hello server two. And then we're asking to receive a response once that data has been picked up. Now we need to move on to server one and server two and execute some code on each of those machines. So they're listening for this connection and listening for this transmission from the client machine. So we're gonna move over to server one here. What we're gonna do on server one is import our socket and import our SSL. And then we're gonna define how to handle the client on this machine. So within handle, what we're gonna do is say that the client requires uh, information about a connection as well as the address of where that connection is coming from. And then we're gonna say with the con or the connection information, I want you to print connected by this specific address. So this is basically establishing that the machine is aware that it is connected to this specific machine, which is found at this specific address. And then within the connection, we're gonna say while this condition is true, the data can be equal to receiving 1024 bits or receiving a maximum of 1024 data if it is not from this connection or if it exceeds that if it exceeds that total amount of data transmission please break the connection off after that what we're going to do is tell machine one or excuse me server one where host two is and what port it may potentially be able to connect to host two once we've defined host two and port two we can connect to server two and send data from server one to server two within the handle client function here so what we're going to say is with socket dot socket again specify our ip uh, protocol version as well as our tcp uh, protocols and we're going to save that as s and then we're going to set up an ssl connection for s and that again will be equal to ssl dot wrap the socket and then we're going to tell it where what its server is we're going to tell it if it requires any certifications and then where to find those certifications after we've defined SSL of S, we're gonna connect the SSL S to host to and port to, and we're gonna say SSL S send all data. So this is basically creating a relay point. So once the handle client function is executed and data is being received, that data will then be relayed from S into S2 or into our second server. Now, after we've defined how to handle the client within server one, we can actually start the server. So with start server, we're basically creating a listening function. So start server does not have any required inputs. It's just gonna be open and ready for transmission from the client. So with the start server function, we're gonna say with socket dot socket. Again, we're gonna define our protocols for the IP address as well as for TCP. And we're gonna save those as S. With S, we're gonna bind 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0 and we're going to define that it's looking for information in port one. So this is essentially saying bind this to your server and wait for me to send you something at this specific port, which was previously defined as port one. After that, we're going to say S dot listen. So exactly what it says, server one, please listen for transmission at this specific port. Once we have set up the listening function, we're then going to create our SSL. So we're going to say that our context here is equal to SSL create default context. And in this case, we're also setting up a purpose within this SSL, which says that we have to have an authorized client connecting to this SSL. After we've set up our SSL context, we're gonna take the context and we are gonna load our certification chain. So this is basically establishing uh, and passing the cert certificates as well as the private keys 
from this server to our client and making sure that our keys and our certificates match to establish that connection. After we've loaded in our certifications, what we're going to do is call on while true. So this is basically creating an infinite loop and we're going to say while true, we want you to wait to accept a possible connection. So we're saying server one, wait to accept and listen for a connection. Once it has received that connection, it's going to parse the data from that connection into two objects, connect and address, which are the same objects or the same parameters that we need for handling our client. So essentially in this first line, we're anticipating the connection from our client and waiting to parse the data. From that connection that we just received, we're gonna wrap that socket based on our connection information, so our host information, and we're gonna say that this is the server side. In this case, that is true. This is the server side of our socket. After that, we call on handle client. So we're calling on the function from up above and we say handle client SSL connect. So that wrapped already, so that already wrapped socket, we're passing it into our handle client function. And then we're also gonna pass off the address so it knows which port to attach to. At that point, if necessary, you can pass in your port one and your host one information again down below the start server function. We did that up above, so we actually would not need this code right here we could simply call on start server. So after we define the start server, we can start the server and it will be actively listening for connection from the client. Now, once we have executed all of that code on server one, we're ready to move on and get server two set up. So now you need to move into your server two command line and start to execute this code on server two. First off, we're gonna define how to handle the client. So as you saw in server one, we essentially set up a relay from server one to server two based on our client information. So this information is supposed to send through an SSL connection from server one to server two. So on server two, we're essentially at our endpoint of our, net of our network. So we do not need to forward any of the data from server two to anywhere else. So because we don't have to forward this data anywhere else, our handle client function actually gets smaller in this instance. So handle client, again, is gonna be looking for two parameters, our connection parameter, and then our address parameter. And we're gonna say with our connection, print where it's connected at and at which address. After we've ensured our connection, we're gonna say while true, I want you to expect to receive this amount of data, 1024, and set that as our data object. And we're gonna say if not data, then we wanna break the connection. Otherwise, connect and send all data to this machine or to this server. Now again, after we've defined how we want server two to handle our connection, we simply have to define to start the server and listen for our commands. So in this case, we're gonna define start server on server two, and then start server, what we're gonna say is that with socket.socket, .socket, so defining our socket protocols again, we want you to set up the socket.af underscore inet, so our IP version for protocols. And then we also want you to call on sock stream for our TCP protocols, and that's all gonna be saved as S. So our socket again is S. After that, again, we'll be binding S using 0.0.0 .0 and specifically looking at port two, which we defined up above in both our client as well as server one. After we've bound S, what we're gonna do is set S to listen. And once we've set it to listen, we're gonna say while true, we want you to accept any possible connections to this specific port and to this specific server. And from those connections, we want you to parse the connection as well as the address of that connection. And then we're gonna take that information and again, we're gonna wrap that socket in an SS in a secure socket layer. And we have to pass the connection address to that, so to that SSL. We have to again define that it is the server side. And then we're gonna specify our safety certificates as well as our private key here in the SSL connection function or SSL connection object. So we're gonna pass cert file as well as key file to SSL underscore connect. After we have SSL underscore connect uh, specified, we can take SSL underscore connect as well as the address of our connection and pass it to handle client and handle client is simply the function that we defined up above. Now, again, if you have not defined the port or the host of virtual machine two or your server two, you need to do that before you can call on start server. So that would be under this section right here where it says define the port and the um, and the host for VM2. After you defined your host and your port, then you can call on the start server function, which basically sets your server up to be listening for a possible connection and listening for possible data transmission, either from virtual machine one or server one, as well as your client. So with that, we have officially finished our build. We've set up this initial network, which takes client data 
transports it to server one, and then also relays that data from server one into server two. We've also set up server two to receive data directly from the client. So we have officially networked three machines together and also added SSL or TLS protection. So SSL being secure socket layer protection and TLS being transport layer security. And while this is a complex topic to understand or to conceptualize, in actuality, the implementation is rather simple and even better with Python, this implementation could be automated. So you could automate your network design and network setup as well as your network analysis. Now, one other potential application here or another potential server setup or another potential network style that we haven't talked about yet is basically using these security protocols and this networking setup to have a server controller. So in this theoretical setup, we have a client machine such as your laptop or your workstation, which has, has an SSL connection from your client into a server controller. And what the server controller does is basically acts as a relay point. So you make a request to send data to a specific server and this server is going to act like your firewall. It's gonna read your request, it's gonna determine if it actually has access to the connection that you're requesting. And then it's also gonna determine if your traffic and the data that you're transmitting is safe to go within your network. So this is kind of like creating an additional buffer to your network. Rather than just going straight from the client into your server, you're creating a security checkpoint. The security checkpoint can be backed up by a firewall. It can be backed up by a network analyzer. It can also be backed up by an SSL connection or SSH connection. So having a central access point to your network in theory probably does slow down your network a little bit but it also really increases the overall security of your network because there's one way in and one way out and by routing all of your traffic through this control server you can increase the probability that you will any kind of data or any kind of code that may be malicious and be trying to access your network for bad rather than good now, as far as setting up this style of network, the setup would be exactly the same as what we just talked through. You would essentially create a connection from your client directly to your server controller or your relay point, your access point. And then from that access point, you would set up different ways to handle the client. So for instance, you could have handle underscore client one as a function and that handle client going to relay the data from your server controller to server one. And then you could have handle client two, which would relay the data from server controller uh, into server controller two. Then also, once you're inside the network and you're sending data through the network, you can also set up connections between server one and server two so they could share data back and forth. So this is just another version of setting up a tiered network to increase the security of your network. Remember that everything has a cost. So in this instance, rather than needing two servers to create your network, you would need three servers. And one of those servers is gonna be dedicated just to security and just to receiving data and transmitting data. If you do not have the financial means to do that, then in this instance, having a server controller or having a relay access point may not be beneficial to you. You might just prefer to have client connect to server one, connect to server two, and have your tiered network design. Now that is what I had for you guys today. I hope you found this very insight. I hope you enjoyed learning how to network as well as secure those connections between the computers in your network. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe. With that, I hope you have a wonderful day and even better rest of your week, and I'll see you next time.